I'll be showing 12 new features in Teams for Education. This includes annotate PDF for educators and students, time-saving assignment updates, reflect improvements, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is a long-time request from educators, and that is the ability to annotate a PDF in an assignment. I'll go to Assignments here as an educator and click Create and then New Assignment. We'll give it a quick title and instructions. Okay, TPS report explorations, and I want the students to add their own TPS report to the assignment and to make it a PDF. And I'm gonna go click Assign. Now we'll flip over to the student. I'm signed in as a student, and here is my TPS report explorations assignment. I'm gonna open this up. Now I'll click Attach, and I'm gonna add my TPS report PDF to this assignment. Okay, here is my next gen TPS report PDF. Now I'm gonna open this up and then click edit. Now as a student on the right hand side, you can see that I can edit and annotate my PDF as well. I'll click a pen here and we will choose a nice purple color and I'm gonna sign my name. Nice signature with a mouse. I can go and highlight some things here as a student or I can erase. So you have quite a few options as a student. And now I will click save changes to save these back to the PDF. And now I'll click close. So my PDF is all ready to turn in to the teacher. I'll go in the upper right and click turn in. Next, I'll switch back to the educator and show what it looks like in the speed grader. I'm signed back in as the educator and I'm gonna open up TPS Report Explorations and we'll scroll down and open up that assignment that was just turned in. There's Ashley and here is that PDF. I can go again and click edit just like I did with the student. A teacher can do this too. And I'll pull out my nice red pen and now I can mark up right here on the page. I can point to the arrow right there on the TPS Report, scroll down, circle some things. And if you have a stylus, you can do this with a device. I'm just using a mouse. You can do all the same things that I was showing before. Now as the educator though, you can do this in your speed grader. And when I'm done, I can just go save changes and move on to the next student. The second new feature allows educators to easily send little reminders to students that might have late assignments. I'll open up this assignment here that I've already sent out. And here's a set of students that I still need to return it to. They've not turned it in. This one student has. I'll select these three students right here, Aaron, Henry, and Ella. And when you select them, you're gonna see a couple options. One of the options is to send a reminder. I'm gonna click this. It'll give me a confirmation. A notification will be sent to each of these selected students reminding them. And this will show up in their activity bill. So you'll ping them inside of Teams. So I will click send. And now all those three students just got a ping in Teams. The third new feature is in the same area. I'm gonna select a student here, Erin Collins, and I wanna give her an extended due date. When you select that student in the list here, you're gonna get extend due date. And I just wanna extend the due date for her. She has some extenuating circumstances and I wanna give her a little more time. So I'll select a different due date. We'll make it due January 12th and we'll make it due at 10 a.m. And then click done. Now this student, Erin, has a special due date. It shows up right here, so you can know she has an extended due date. The rest of the class has the original due date. The fourth new feature is also in this assignment list. I can select a couple of students and leave bulk feedback at the same time. Maybe I wanna leave the same type of feedback across a set of students. I can just go here, type in my feedback, great job, and click done. Now what happens is that will bulk put it across the board. And in this case, the students didn't turn it in. I'm just giving you a demonstration. You typically do this if they've all turned it in. Maybe you just wanna bulk leave something across the board. The leave feedback and extend due date are in public preview rolling out globally right now. So if you don't quite see it, you should see it in a couple days in early January. The fifth new feature is the Reflect Mindful Coloring Book. I'm signed in as a student and I will go over and click on Reflect. And this is the student's version of Reflect. There is a new option that is Coloring Book right here. This is the redesigned Reflect Student homepage and lots of fun things. I've showed other examples in the past, but the newest one is the coloring book. So I will click here. This is the Reflect coloring book and there are different emotions along the bottom. So one's about focused, frustrated, happy, included. So you can choose a page that you want. I can go over here and there's lots of different options. I can go random or I can choose one. So I'm gonna do, why did you feel successful recently? and I'm gonna go over here and start clicking on the color. So I'll click here, and there's my little feelings monster. He's now green. Maybe I wanna give him a red tongue like this, give it a nice sky blue background with the white clouds. Here is my mountain, and I can click different parts of it. So it's very easy to color different aspects right here. I'm clicking on some green and give it a little bit of shading. 
maybe some more green here. There's some green on the mountain as well. And it's very quick and easy to start making a really fun design. And we're gonna finish this up, get a, a few more little places. And what's nice is when you're all done, you can say, I'm done, start over or change the picture. I'll click I'm done. And then, oh, gives me a little celebration. And I can say, save this. So I can click here and it will offer to save this as a JPEG that I can open up. So I can save this image, I can share it, or I can say, try another picture. So this mindful coloring book is a really fun and relaxing way that students, and we've also heard from adults, they like it too, they can have a lot of fun with Reflect. The sixth new feature is also in Reflect, but it is staff teams getting Reflect. So Reflect for grownups. I'm gonna go into my staff team right here, and when you create a new staff team, as the owner, you're gonna see Reflect up at the top. I'm the staff owner, so I get to choose the Reflect check-ins. We'll click into here. And just like you've seen in the class, here is a staff Reflect. I will click on new check-in, and the options here are explore check-in ideas, and when I open that, not only do you have student well-being, but you have educator well-being. And these are specifically tailored for staff. So how are things going in our school so far? About your workload, your ability to manage work-related stress, team meetings. Maybe I'm gonna ask something about the progress your team has made this year. So I click this and it adds it into a check-in and I can do a preview. So just like you've seen in the regular Reflect, a similar type of Reflect, this is where staff can choose these same type of feelings monsters and hit submit. So all of these things operate in the same way that you would normally see Reflect in the classroom. So this is really just Reflect for staff. And I can create this check-in and I can capture all this information for my staff. The seventh new feature is noise suppression for reading progress in Teams. Reading progress is one of our learning accelerators that helps with reading fluency. Now I'm gonna go into assignments as the educator and I'm gonna open up the geography assignment and I'm gonna open up an assignment from Ashley. Here is Ashley's reading assignment. She turned it in, she recorded herself reading out loud, but sometimes educators have said, if I'm in a classroom and a lot of students are recording themselves reading, there can be background noise and it throws off the auto detect AI that helps things like mispronunciations, insertions, self-corrections, etc. What we've done is added a background noise suppression. So what an educator can do is, if they wanna have an AI layer applied on top that does background noise suppression, it can give a cleaner reading of the student. So if I was an educator and I wanted to turn this on, I would just flip this background noise suppression to on. What it'll do is recalculate the entire passage and remark it up based on the noise suppression layer. This is fully rolled out globally now. The eighth new feature is a warning for students if they forgot to turn in their attached work. This is a great time saver for teachers so they don't have to nag the students who forgot. I'm an educator and I'm gonna click create new assignment and I'll give it a title and instructions. I've said, please write an essay on the Amazon rainforest and attach your work when turning in. All we do is we key off the words attach or add or attachment as keywords in your instructions. So when the student is turning it in, if they didn't attach anything, we will give them a little prompt and I'll show how that works. I'll push this out as an assignment and then we'll show what the student sees on her end. And at the bottom, I'll click assign. Now we'll switch over to the student. I'm signed in as the student and here is my assignment list. Here's the Amazon Rainforest essay. I'm gonna open this up. Now let's say I was all excited about this essay and then I opened up my assignment and I totally forgot to actually attach any work. And I go up here and I click on turn in. Oh, a little error. No work attached. Are you sure you want to turn this assignment? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to turn in the assignment with that Amazon Rainforest attached. So I can click cancel and go back and attach it. Okay, now it's attached. I can go back up and click turn in and I'm all set. The ninth new feature is an updated entry point for assignments to make it easy for students to edit their own work. I'm signed in as the teacher and I will click create and new assignment. Right here, I will click new and I will choose Word document and we'll give it a title and click done. Now in the past, the only way you could make it so students could edit their own copy was hit the three dot menu and say students edit their own copy. Some educators couldn't find that very easily, so what we've done is exposed it right here so it's right in your face. So right here it says students can't edit. I can go here and say students edit their own copy. Now when I make this assignment, students will get their own copy to edit and it won't be read only. The 10th new feature supports tables inside of assignment instructions. So I will give a title here. Now when I click, there's a little table button. I'll click this and say insert table. I can go and I can say add more columns if I wanna make it bigger. 
I can insert a row like that. I can even go and say format the table. Click here and say format table. I can make it border color. Ooh, pretty. We'll choose orange. That's got nice orange colors. I can go and delete the entire table or delete columns and rows. Now I can fill out my table and I can put whatever I want to into that table. I can even click here and size it to make it bigger like that. The 11th new feature is updated turn in celebrations. This is one of my favorites. I'm signed in as a student and I'm gonna open up this assignment here and I'm gonna just turn this in so you can see an example of one of the newest turn in celebrations. And it's different every time for the student. So in the upper right, I'll click turn in. Hey, hey, there's a new little celebration, woo! The 12th new feature is the School Connection app, which is built into the Teams mobile consumer app on iPhone or Android, and it lets educators keep in touch with parents on how students are doing. I'm here in Class Teams, and I'm gonna go to this Parents area, and this has been enabled by my IT admin. What you see is a set of students and their map to different parents and guardians. The way to do this automatically is if your school uses School Data Sync, and you have those parent emails in the School Data Sync, that will map automatically. So everything will be set up with the students and those parent emails. To see a deep dive demo of the parent app, something we call parent connection and how you can communicate outwardly with parents, I've got a video link in the upper right that goes into much more detail. Now in this case, we're gonna pretend that a parent has already been mapped to a student and I'm gonna switch over to the mobile phone as a parent. I'm here in the mobile phone and I'm gonna launch Teams for Education on my iPhone. Now I'm gonna choose my guardian account. So that's my outlook.com, I'm the parent. I will tap demo guardian account. So I'm the parent and it's gonna sign me in. Okay, here I am as my consumer parent and we're gonna go and add the school connection app. This is the consumer version of Teams. So in the upper left, tap on the little MG, that's the name of the parent and we're gonna go into settings. So now tap settings. And then at the bottom, you're gonna see this school connection. Tap school connection and now go to enable and we're gonna turn this on. And then hit back and close that dialog. In the lower part, you're gonna see in the middle this little school connection, little parent and the student. Tap that, and now we're gonna load up school connection. This is gonna pull in the information for my child whose name is Ryan. Ryan's a student, he's at Scottsdale Academy. I can see that he has three assignments, activity. I can tap on Ryan, and it's gonna show more information about what's happening in the class. So you can see his assignments and quizzes, still due today, turned in, past due, etc. I'm gonna drill into assignments and quizzes back up at the top. I can see all the different assignments. I can see all classes in a different date range. I'm gonna tap into one on Spanish, and here's all the information. Oh, this one's past due. You can see the teacher. You can see that I have information about it. I'm gonna scroll down and go into, this is an essay on Macbeth, and this is has already been graded, I can tap into the rubric. So as a parent, I can even see the rubric and how this was scored, different types of points, the weighting. So all this information is available to me as a parent. Now I'm gonna go down and go a little farther. Let's tap back and go out of this. Now I'm gonna go and look at ones that have been graded. So I can go and see, oh, it's been graded. This essay from Mabeth was graded. I can see that like I did before. I can go back. Now we also have insights. Bottom you see insights. I flipped over to an example. I don't have all the data filled out on my actual phone, but here's an example of all the types of things you'll be able to see for insights. What assignments are turned in? If you have learning accelerators like reading progress, you'll be able to drill in and see reading accuracy, even new practice words, and what type of digital activity your student is doing. To show an example of what that might look like, here's reading progress. I can tap when I hit done. At the bottom, new practice words. I can even see the words that my student might need to practice when they're using reading progress. So all sorts of insights will be showing up in this area in terms of learning accelerators. So stay tuned for even more coming in the future. If you wanna keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.